Hi, and welcome along to the next in our Kubernetes Security Fundamentals video series. In the last video, we took a look at some of Kubernetes inbuilt authentication mechanisms, specifically bootstrap token authentication and static token authentication. And in this video, we're going to carry on by looking at service account token authentication, which is used by applications running inside the cluster to authenticate to the Kubernetes API. Before we get into it, though, let's have a quick reminder of the high level process. When a request comes into a Kubernetes cluster, it essentially goes through three steps. The first one is authentication, which is making sure that the service or user has valid credentials for that cluster. Then we go through to make sure that the request is authorized so that the user requesting it actually has the rights to do what they're trying to do. And then lastly, we have admission control, which will validate the request and potentially mutate it before it's actually admitted into the cluster. So, Today we're going to look at service accounts, and these are present and used quite heavily in a lot of clusters, because sometimes you'll need a workload to actually authenticate to the cluster API to do something. Um, in the old days of Kubernetes, these used to be uh, managed by secret objects, which were created in the cluster and then mounted inside workloads as needed. These were non-expiring JWT credentials, uh, and essentially not ideal from a security standpoint, because anyone who managed to get access to those could have had persistent access to the cluster. In modern Kubernetes, however, this has changed, and now we use uh, the token request API to generate shorter-lived secrets and then mount those inside the cluster. And let's have a quick look and see how that works. So I've got our standard kind cluster here uh, that we always use for these demonstrations. And what I'm going to do is I am going to create a workload inside the cluster. So I'm just going to do a standard kubectl run command, and we're going to get a shell inside it so we can look at some things once it's running. Um, and now we've got a, a, a command prompt running inside that pod. So the first thing is we want to get access to our service account token, which has been mounted inside the pod. And this is always at the standard location. Um, one thing to note is that you can see from the command I ran, I didn't say anything about, hey, you need to mount a service account token. By default, this will always happen in every pod. So every pod has a credential. Now, from a security standpoint, this is not a great default um, because if you don't need credentials, you shouldn't have them. Uh, so I generally recommend people actually disable that, which you can do if you're writing YAML for your Kubernetes manifests. However, for the purpose of this demonstration, it's useful that it's there. What we're going to do is we're going to cat this token and then we're going to decode it and have a look and see what's inside. So what we get back is we get back some token claims. We get back our audience, which is our Kubernetes cluster. We then get back this EXP parameter, which is when the token is going to expire. Now, if that's in Unix format, so it's kind of hard to read, but if I do date minus D and then that, uh, that is one year from when this video is being recorded. So this token is valid for a year. And from a security standpoint, you may say, well, that's not great because that's a very long time for a credential to be valid. And like I said, you can't explicitly revoke the credential. However, um, you see here, we've got a pod name and UID. This token is actually bound to that pod specifically. And if this pod is ever deleted or removed from the cluster, this credential is no longer valid. So essentially the cluster will check and say, hey, um, you know, you're bound to this pod. Does that pod still exist? And the answer is no, the, the token is invalid. You also see a service account here. Uh, and if that service account is removed, then the token is also going to be invalid. So you can invalidate these tokens. Uh, so whilst it's valid for a year, that's less of a concern than it might be. So I've got access to the cluster using this token just by being inside a pod. And the question is obviously going to be, what rights do I have? So we can find that out by just running kubectl off can I list. And you get quite a long set of rights. However, all of these ones are ones that are given to any authenticated user, uh, and they shouldn't give any access to any sensitive information. And then there's a couple of stuff that allows it to do uh, access rights reviews as well. Again, nothing sensitive there. So by default, you don't get a lot of rights from this token. However, um, one of the things uh, from our token up here is um, it's actually given it the rights of the default service account in the default namespace. And that's not, again, again a great default. You definitely shouldn't use that because any pod that, that doesn't specify a token gets those rights and you should never get rights to that token because obviously then every pod gets it. And I have seen cases where that's happened. So it's definitely one to watch for. So it isn't a major problem, but something to be aware of. And generally I would recommend not mounting uh, service account tokens inside pods unless you need them. 
However, we can also use the, um, the token request API from outside a pod as well. We can actually create new tokens. So I can essentially create a token for the default service account just by running kubectl create token default, and then we'll decode it again because this is a little bit different than the one we had inside the pod. So we get back another token and there's some differences. The audience parameter here is the same, it's the same cluster. This exp parameter, um, you might notice different, uh, but we can actually decode it. And that's an hour from the recording of this video, so an hour from when it was created. And so we can see this is a much shorter expiry. So we use this off by using uh, um, create token. Uh, it actually has a much shorter default expiry. However, it's worth noting that if you wanted to, you can make those much longer expiries. You can make it, it depends on the distribution you're using, but it could be up to a year. Uh, and also there's obviously no uh, bound pod here because we're not inside a pod. There is a bound uh, service account. So if that service account is deleted, this credential is no longer valid. So from that perspective, um, what do you have to watch out for uh, in terms of security? Well, if you give someone rights to create tokens, they can essentially create credentials and they can do that for any service account that they have rights and access to. If an attacker gets even very temporary access to this facility, they can create privileged service account tokens and set the expiry to be quite a long time. So that's obviously a concern. Uh, to give you an example, kubectl create token minus n cube system cluster row addition roller. Uh, this token here is uh, a token for the cluster role aggregation controller. And um, this is quite a high privileged account, uh, which has a lot of access and can't easily be removed. So you can't just delete that service account to get rid of it. And if an attacker was able to generate a token for this service account, they would be able to um, retain privileged access to the cluster for a long time. So it is very important to control access to this facility. Um, so anyway, that was a quick look at uh, um, service account tokens and some of how they work and what they do. Uh, in the next video, we're going to take a look at some more of Kubernetes authentication methods by looking at some of the external ones that are more commonly used in production clusters. As ever, if you want more information, uh, please do have a look at the Datadog Security Labs blog site, and I look forward to seeing you in the next video.